the Rikishi Fatu Off the Top Podcast. Let's go. Rikishi Fatu, all y'all ready? We the ones. It's 2024. Keep it locked on the Rikishi Fatu Podcast. Off the top. We gon' talk about everything. Everything wrestling, everything hip hop. Keep it locked. It's time to smarten up. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's another episode of the Rikishi Fatu Off the Top Podcast. I'd like to thank everyone for tuning in tonight. And listen, I want to first start off the show here by sending a big shout out to my sponsors, Knox Pro Entertainment. Uh, anything Knox Pro, like Academy, you want to learn about wrestling, go ahead and stop by and check them out. Go to knokxpro.com. And so I got to listen. I, first of all, I'd like to uh, you know, thank my homie, my one of my students, my I like to call him my nephew. I learned, uh, I've known him so long since he was a kid. Uh, by the name of uh, TMD, he's my co-host, better known as Joey Gaten. What's happening, Joey? What's going on, Keisha? How you doing? Good to see you again. Uh, uh, damn, I, I'm almost like, you know, just my brain is kind of just tired from waiting all this time. Man. But we, we're here. We made it. What's happening? Man, there is a lot going on right now in the mm. world of professional wrestling. Oh, Lord. What a crazy two days it's been. What? <laughs> See, I'm not the type that's online too much, but I'll get, uh, if it's what I'm thinking is. Yes, absolutely. I, you I'm, know, well, well, go ahead. Tell me about it. Two, I mean, just uh, two days ago, WWE signed that deal with Netflix for over five billion dollars for ten years. That's crazy, man. And that's that happened. I think that news dropped on a Tuesday, uh, on a Wednesday, mm. uh, and we're at five billion dollars professional wrestling. As if WWE don't have enough money. Wow, I mean, right? it's, it's that's going into a different ionosphere I mean, of I, money. I mean, who 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 brokers a deal like that? Five billion dollars. Billion. That's you, like super not, not villain. Million. You said billion. That's super villain money. Yeah, yeah, billion, billion, billion. Wow, it, wow. That is a lot of money, and with profess, I, uh, professional wrestling involved with that in the same sentence, uh, you, it's just uh, mind boggling. And that happens on on a Wednesday. That news comes out, mm. and then Dwayne Johnson, mm. uh, you know, part of the bloodline. He's uh -huh. he's on the he's a on the board. He's a board member. <laughs> what that? Wow. How about that? That's awesome. That's good. Good for Dwayne, you know? Yeah. Yeah, five billion. Wow. And, and, and then mean, that yeah. was on a Wednesday and then Thursday. That's good news. Yes, it's, it's very that's that's good news. That's real good news. That's good news. That's what? good news. But the okay. bad news, the very next day, Vince what? McMahon, who's also on that same board that Dwayne Johnson's on TKO, mm -hmm. Vince McMahon, he's in the news and it's not good. Nobody well, knows anything yet, uh, uh, but these these uh, details just did come out today. And not only that, the beast Brock Lesnar got brought into it as well. I mean, it's wow. getting messy. It's getting really messy, and um, it's all out there. I mean, it's it's uh, and Wall Street what? Journal's talking about it. I mean, it's really big news. <laughs> so they broke that right after the other news. Yes. The good news. They, they, they didn't even let the and, ink and, dry on the deal, <laughs> wow. and, and then this came out. But you yeah. know what? I think it's just coincidence because this has been in lit 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 litigation, mm -hmm. yeah. and so this isn't like these this transcript that that came out today. It's yeah. not like it just came out yesterday. It's been over time. These details were just released today. Wow! And it's already headline news everywhere. And it really, in my opinion, it put a damper on the whole Netflix deal. It really did because now Vince McMahon, the what? face of WWE, man, he's got some really nasty uh, well, there allegations. Ain't, there ain't nothing dampered about that five billion. Yeah. yeah, it's just it's it's just uh, as a lifelong pro wrestling fan to see all yeah. sides of Vince McMahon, to the, the to see this <laughs> side and to hear the details and the way I mean, yeah. the verbiage is insane. You know, I ain't been with WWE in the last twenty something years. I've been retired, but you know, when you have a family that's been there for seventy five plus years, you know, it's almost like Vince McMahon is you know another pops. Do you yeah. remember your first time you ever met Vince McMahon? Oh my goodness! Yeah, and, and I, what that was like? Were you intimidated by him? Were you cool? I mean, like, what was it like? No, I wasn't. I was actually in uh, um, what's his uh, Vashon's wedding. They shot. Remember back in the day, WWF. So it had David Schultz, it had Charlie Fulton, the Wild Samoans, and uh, during the time, uh, Vince was there. Randy Macho Man, uh, George Animal Steel. I'm probably naming names that some of these young kids don't even know. But it was the wedding of uh, 
uh, Carla Duke, I think it was, Luna Vachon's uh -huh. uh, uncle. Okay. So it was his wedding, and they were shooting, you know, they were shooting the um, the video for it. And so I was there, and it was the first time that I, I met uh, Vince McMahon. You know, I, I wasn't even a part of WWE, but my uncles, you know, brought me with, you know, with them, and I was able to get my little, you know, my little mark moment for a bit. I, I, I was on TV with them, and you know, getting to meet all the wrestlers that I watch on TV. And, and when I met Vince, it was, it was cool as hell, man. It's like I knew him, you know, for a while. It's like he knew me, and being because you know, I'm, you know, the, the uncle's uh, nephew. Mm -hmm. I think it was, you know, that that type of relationship kind of, you know, took off from there. Right, and the um, the the history goes deep with the McMahons and the Maivias and the um, Anawais and Fatus. Yeah. So he's kind of always had a, a deep respect for your um, your your family, right? Yeah. This, I mean, when you say bloodline, that's that's a shoot. You know, it's been that. You know, these uh, all come from you know uh, from the same bloodline that you know. Uh, 75 plus years, you know, start from Uncle, you know, High Chief Peter Maivira, Uncle Alfonsica, uh, you know, down to Yoko, uh, Big Sammy, Samu, um, come down to myself, The Rock, you know, all the way down. There's just, just so many of us, you know, there's so many of us, and we're still going past, present, and future, so. Going yeah. strong, too. Man, sometimes I wonder, Joey, like, you know, a lot of people ask me, well, how come is it's a lot of you guys? I say, well, shit, I don't know. Go ask them. Because <laughs> every time another family member are coming to the training, it's like, why don't you go play football? Because they're all athletic, right? They're good athletes. But for some reason, it just, this business just draws the best of the best in our family to come to professional wrestling, you know? And, uh, you know, the, the rest is history, so... Again, you know, I say this all the time, you know, as being a part of the family member, it's, it's a lot of uh, pride, it's a lot of respect, uh, it's a lot of uh, um, responsibility uh, to be able to lead and, uh, you know, step into the shoes of those that paved the way in our family and try to stay, you know, stay afloat that way, you know, uh, you know, to never do anything that a uh, tarnish and, you know, bring bad vibes or bad reputation to this family. You know, it, it goes real deep, and it starts from the living room, uh, from our culture, uh, being in the, the family of faith church, and he was very strong. My grandfather was the first preacher in San Francisco, California. And so all this, you know, these bloodlines, past, present, future, we all came from San Francisco. There was this uh, house, it's called Two Dublin Street, up in the Excelsior area. If you're around the Bay Area, go check that address out. And you'll see, you know how they got the Michael Jacksons and the Jackson Fives out there in Indiana? Well, the Samoan Dynasty is out there in San Francisco. It's called Two Dublin Street. Breakdancing. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah. Isn't that one way you used to make uh, um, some little side changes and you used to break well, dance out yeah, there? Yeah, you know, I I went to school, you know, I played football. Football wasn't for me. And then I did, the, you know, basketball. I was real good at basketball. You know, uh, and I kind of love basketball. And so that's where I got my, you know, I was so light on my feet was, was from basketball. But during school, you know, I had a, a little side job and I worked for Safeway Supermarket. And I was a courtesy clerk. So okay. I used to push all these carts and so forth. Mm -hmm. I would go. They would only give me the weekend, uh, the, the weekends because I would go to school during the, you know, the weekdays. So Friday, you know, Friday I would go do a late night shift. Saturday and Sunday I'd work. And then during that time on a, on a, on a Saturday, I would go down to, when I'm off on the, these certain days, I would go down to Pier 39. Mm -hmm. So Pier 39, you know, me and my cousin said, move. You know, so Samu, <laughs> Samu back in the day, he was from the streets of San Francisco, too. Wow. He would come up to 2 Dublin Street, and I would always hear, as soon as I hear this mini bike, wang, wang, wang. Now, you picture this 6'3", <laughs> right, 260-pound cat, wang, wang. So he would pull up, he said, let's go. You know, so he would have those, remember those boom box? Back in the day, he would tie that zip tie, that boom box, mm -hmm. on the front of the handlebars of the mini bike. 
Now, this mini bike, he would customize the chair on the bike to make it long because there was no way his ass and my ass <laughs> was going to fit, fit on. So we would get on there, mm. and we would ride, man. We would ride, and we'd go down Mission Street, and those that live in the Bay Area, you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. It took a long, you know, like probably about two gases uh, to, fill up the, to fill up the mini bike to get all the way down there. And so when we got to Pier 39... We would set up the, you know, the milk carton. And so we would set up the milk carton. He would get the size D batteries, Lord. Sometimes I felt like I just danced to buy batteries. <laughs> he would play the, you know, back in the day, Zap Band. And, mm -hmm. and I would just sit there and just start pop locking. You know, I used to dance for, you know, just mess around at home. But when I found out that I can dance and make some money, so that was kind of like my second job was to be out there in, thirty, you know, Pier 39 and start, you know, doing strutting. Like, you remember how they had the mines out there? What year was this? Um, I would have to say 1984. Oh, my goodness. This is when yeah. hip-hop was just you coming in. in. Oh, and that's, you know, that's that's the, uh, the thing that I fell in love with, hip-hop. You're, I was just yeah. going to say, you're very much into hip-hop. I've, I've known oh. you, I've known you for a long time, and you're very much into uh, rap and, and R&B, soul, funk, old, yeah. old school. Um, or you, you remember that, I used to hit you up, hey, Joey, so, uh, fill, up, fill up my iPod. So, to, I, gotta, you know? I, I gotta tell yeah. the story, I gotta tell the story, so. <laughs> Rikishi Fatu, off the top, we coming right back. All right, everybody, welcome back to Off the Top with Rikishi Fatu and uh, TMD here. Uh, Kishi, can I, can I tell you a story, please? Uh, yeah, okay, go ahead. <laughs> so this is this is back in the iPod days. This is back mm. when iPods uh, were around, and you, I, I'm a DJ. I, I've done it on the side for a long time, so I have a lot of music on hand, and you knew this. Yeah. Because I would DJ the, the old, old Knox Pro Domain shows and whatnot, and you would have me upload songs to your iPod, because uh, you wanted uh, hip hop, you wanted old school, you mm -hmm. wanted funk, you wanted R and B, and I was like, okay, so we did this about th three times together. I uploaded music for you, yeah. and then, and then so after the third time, I'm like, you know, I'm starting to run out of ideas. I'm like, what yeah. can I send Keish? What, what's he gonna like? You know, so I I I, I kind of like uh, experimented a little bit, and I was like, yeah. okay, so I, I threw on the the, the, the Archies, <laughs> Sugar Sugar, <laughs> so. <laughs> so I, <laughs> That was a good, good, good rib. Right? So what, what happened? You're on the airplane. So, so I'll take over. So I'm on an airplane. I was like, oh man, I was excited. I got some new song, some new music. I, you know, I want to see what Joey put on there for me. And all of a sudden, I'm in first class, and I hear sugar, sugar, ah, <laughs> uh, honey, honey. Boy, I was like that motherfucker, Joey. He done got me down. And of course, you know, you know, I called you after, right? I said, "Good rip, Joey." Good rip. <laughs> I was like, "What the sugar, sugar had to do with hip hop and funk, right?" It's like that was one of those uh, moments I wanted to call Joey and say, "Smarten up." Oh, you know? man! But you did tell me about it. He said, "Joey, don't you ever give me that type of music again? Take that off." Oh, I don't man. think I ever gave you an iPod again to put music. I don't. That was the third and last time. You're right. You're right. Uh, oh man, I, it was the Archie Sugar Sugar. I will never forget that. You, uh, <laughs> yeah. He said, "Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> look, we laughed so hard, but damn cheeks are hurting." Oh yet. man, so it's so we know we know yeah. you don't like the Archies. Uh, we no. know you don't like that type of music. You, you're yeah. on a, on a, on a real hip hop tip. Let me um, ask you this, Keish. In the 80s, yeah. uh, I, uh, who did you really like? What type of uh, artists, MCs, rappers, uh, uh, dance crew? Like, who influenced you, and uh, who did you, like, really uh, follow uh, tabs on? I mean, you know, during the 80s, man, I, a lot of that time there, I was, uh, you know, I was in a little bit in the, in, in the Bay Area, and then most of the time in the East Coast in, in Connecticut uh, training. But, you know, uh, I used to like E-40, from the Bay Area, mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, um, who's it? Uh, uh, Mac Dre. Mac Dre, yes. He, he was, uh, you know, the old old school from from the Bay. 
Uh, damn, I can't remember some of the other guys' name, but I, I listened to a lot of like Dougie Fresh. Okay. Okay. Uh, Slick Rick. Slick Rick. Yeah. Uh, but then when I came to the to the East Coast and I lived with my uncle Alpha, and I was training over there in Hampton, Connecticut, you know, I would always. Uh, that's when uh, uh, LL Cool J came out with that bad. Uh, that, that album, his first album, oh, yeah, right? First, yeah, yeah. I need love. Mm -hmm. You hear that? Man, you're so And then sweet. Uh, 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 Run DMC. Oh, man. Um, who else, man? Uh, Method Man. Yeah. Wu Tang Clan. I was just going to ask you, are you a Wu Tang yeah, fan big clan? Big time. You, you see on my Instagram, every time that I'm, when I'm posting, I would post up the instrumental music of Triumph from uh, Wu-Tang Clan. Yeah. Oh, you man. Know? Oh, and yeah. So, you know, I, I, I like the A lot of the guys that, you know, the music that I like was not only with the beat, but I also like, like, you know, the lyrics that they have. You know, because I would really listen to, you know, the lyrics when they're, when they're playing because sometimes it'll feel like I'm feeling that type of vibe. Right? Now, nowadays, you know, it's, it's different. You know, it's a new era. You know, I, I'm, I'm a fan of uh, Travis Scott, uh, my son's. <laughs> Samson and, I, and I'm only a fan of his because the one beat that came on when I heard it on the radio I asked Samson my son I said who is this and he told me it's Travis Scott but I only it wasn't the it wasn't the lyrics mm -hmm. it was the beat you know and right. you know at this age you know every, I, every time I hear a good beat it just automatically you know moves my feet man so I love hip hop I, I do like uh, island reggae Yes. You know, there's a lot of, like, you know, our people in Polynesia now, you know, there's so many, you know, uh, huge uh, names that are in the, you know, island reggae as far as Fiji. Jay Boog. Jay Boog's in the house. I, I Spawn went to, Breezy. I went to a Jay yeah. Boog uh, show in San Francisco. Yeah. And, of course, all Samoans. I'm probably the only Mexican there. Yeah. And I'm like, you know what? I, I feel like I'm going to run into, like, someone from Knox Pro. Yeah. You know, time's going on, time's going on. And, and, and oh, who would I see with the big glasses? Bleeda. Oh, I ran into Bleeda. Shout out to Bleeda. Yeah, Jay Bleeda, oh, man. OG oh, from Knox, bro. Man. man. I, I, I love Bleeda so much. Uh, yeah, and I saw him there, but Jay, Jay Boog is, is is awesome. Yeah. Because he, he blends kind of that, that island with, with the, the flow. He sings. He's melodic. Yeah. Uh, you you know, the, you know, Polynesian, the, uh, uh, a lot of the hip-hop and the island reggae, you know, they've really, really come up. I mean, you know, it's a beautiful thing to see a lot of, uh, you know, their concerts. It's like, you know, uh, with the exception of Jay Boog and the big superstars like, uh, you know, Fiji and so forth. But, you know, it's it's a beautiful thing to see Polynesian people go out there and support Polynesian artists. You know, they, you know a lot of us, we love rap. You know, uh, Australia, New Zealand. Uh, there's huge, you know, a lot of uh, rap artists out there. And it's all, uh, you know, a lot of them were influenced by, you and I know, this iconic uh, name of Booyah Tribe. Oh, yes. Yeah. You know, big yeah. shout out to Red, you know. Rest Do you in know peace. those guys? Yes, I know that. One of my one of my first songs I did in rap, and it's one of the songs that's in the vault. Kishi never puts it out. I might put it out sometime this summer. But me and Red, you know, we... I walked into the uh, to the studio. My my brother TK he said, "Let's go to the studio." And I was just there. I was wrestling, uh, doing a thing for WWE. Mm -hmm. And so I said, "He says, let's go to the studio." I said, "Why?" He says, "You know, Booyah Tribe Red is over there. He's you know doing some music, and then we'll go have a few drinks." So I walk in and come into the studio, man. And that's where I was first introduced, like smoke all over, right? Hennessy, you know what I mean? And I'm watching, you know, the guy, I was a big fan of Red's. Wow. And I'm watching Red just with no pad, just coming straight off the dome, you know, and he was just going at it, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, he came out and he was, you know, seeing me there, he was happy, to, you know, that I was there, I was happy to see him. And it's one of those nights we just started having shots of, you know, Hennessy. Wow. Before you know it, I, my, my drunk ass was in the booth. <laughs> really? <laughs> So I was in the booth. And how, then, how many shots do you think it, it takes uh, you to get, get to a good enough buzz to where you're gonna hop in that booth and just flow? Back I, in that, back in the day, Joey, I can drink. I can drink. Like, I come from BSK. Okay. I come from. I'm Yoko, just, I'm just gonna guess. I'm just gonna um, uh, go for it. Twenty shots. Just about. 
And then you're feeling at, right. at those size, you know, you remember and the size w- of the shots. Was it always Hennessy? Yeah. Jack Daniels. Jack Daniels, okay. I, I won the Hennessy man, you know? Yeah, he yeah, made, yeah. Russ nah. says, we didn't make that much money, so we stuck with the Jack Daniels. Did you do it you straight? Know? Straight up. Yeah. But you'd you, you take it, and we started this thing, you'd have to gargle. So every time we took a shot with Taker and Yoko, mm-hmm. you couldn't just swing it back. Right. You had to take it, you got to lift up in there and... Was gargling got, to, to prove that you're taking the shot or did it add some kind of... It, it, for me, it was it was probably a way that, like, we we getting a quicker buzz. Okay. You know what I mean? But I, to this day, I don't know why the, why the hell we was gargling for it. Right, because I've heard of you stories know? of Mr. Perfect uh, gargling it because, and I, I, I've always assumed it's maybe... Uh, to prove that uh, you're drinking the shot because there are other stories of other uh, wrestlers over mm-hmm. throughout the years pretending to drink the shot and throwing it over uh, their shoulders. Um, well, yeah, that happened a lot. Yeah. But here's what happened. If, if if we bought it... Yes, sir. ...and you drunk it and you threw it over, uh-huh. uh, that was your ass. Oh. It's there's, GMA. You know, them shots were expensive. There's, the there's been some offenders over you the know, years? Over the years. There's been, really? You know what I mean? And so, but... You, it's one of those things for the boys, mm-hmm. right? Yes, you know, it's, yeah. it's like, you know, it's it's our commodity together. Yeah, Absolutely. Hey, John, I don't want to give you a shot just to, you know, just to waste it. Drink it. Right. Obviously, I like you while I'm giving you a shot. Right. You know what I mean? So it was that, you know, uh, taking a shot. But anyhow, so me and uh, me and uh, uh, Red, so we did our song together. And uh, I was, you know, after I got in there and, I, and he did it and... Uh, uh, the guy that made the music, you know, put the master on it. You know, when you hear yourself on mic, you know, I was like, is that really me? And it just gave me a little bit of confidence. Like, damn it, I sound good on there, you know. And if I got rid of saying you sound good, you got, you're got you a natural in there. It just, you know, made me think it was one of those things that I always wanted to do and uh, was to, you know, make me a hip-hop album. You really? Know? And so that's 25 years or so later, uh, what I'm talking about. And so years later now, fast forward, you know, I'm I, you know I'm just gonna throw it. I'm I'm working on uh finally a new album now. Really? And hopefully twenty twenty four, uh, you know, it'll be ready and uh is it's just some something what a you know, as a kid, mm-hmm. my to do list that, you know, I never got a chance to finish it. And right. uh, I've, I've had, you know, you've heard a few uh-huh. of my songs that I've wrote that I you know, I put it in a vote. And nobody has ever heard that. I never played it for anybody. But when I let some of my friends hear it and some of the family members, you know, they said, man, you ought to put this out. So, yeah, why man. not? You know? So so 2024, Kishi's going to release an album. I'm working on an album right now. So. Is it going to be hip-hop influence? Or is it gonna, cause a little, you, you got a, a lot of t- different tastes. It's not, like, I'm, a, I'm a Barry White fan. Right, right. You know what I mean? But I love hip-hop. We've I, heard you all sing, put a little ass on Hey, it. platinum, platinum. Man, baby. <laughs> for real. For real. Man. But, so you, you've you gone, you've gone, your voice has gone platinum. You've done, no, you've been doing this. What you know, and it ain't like I'm, a, I'm not, you know, a pro at it. At it. And that's one thing. I'm not scared to try something. Right. You know, I, I'm open to, you know, people's opinions and whatever the case may be. But at the end of the day, I will never know if I don't go and try it. You know, uh, so that's what I'm saying to everybody. I tell you, like, you know, at the end of the day, you got to be your biggest supporter. Sure. And so I, I feel like I got a, a different voice on the radio. You know, I, on the mic, it, it just sounds different to me. It sounds good to me, but it's just me learning the angles in the studio. You know, when to spit. Uh, you know, I have a guy that's helping me uh, write the lyrics for me. You know, mm-hmm. but uh, you know, we we collab together. You know what I'm feeling. I would send them beats of what I like. And then we would, you know, he would write, you know, the the lyrics together. And then I would try to, you know, kind of listen to it and just give my little two cents of what I, because if I'm not feeling it, there's no way I can spit it out. Right. You know, but I, I love the one thing that I, I'm a big fan of, uh, the artist of uh, Barry White. Wait, what's your that, favorite song? Uh, what, what, I'll tell you why with Barry White. Mm-hmm. All his songs was my favorite. Okay. It's because this man just sung about love. Mm. You know, when you turn on every time when I, you know, you know, back in the day, you know, mm-hmm. I mean, way, way, way back in the day. I ain't going to say no names, but, you know, when I used to have that, that little feeling, you know, and so I would throw on some Barry White. Mm-hmm. 
you know, the room be like, you know, a little dim. You might you got those little dim switches. Oh, man, yes. So the lights would go down dim, you know what I mean? And he got in there, I had me a little, you know, a little little bottle there inside the bed and so forth. And you see what I mean? Mm-hmm. And then I'm I, I ain't going, I ain't, yeah, you, you can miss it. I'm like, there right now. I'm trying not so, to go all the way you know, there, but I'm there. Just kind of turn on that very white and, mm-hmm. you know, just lay there and, you know, how you doing, baby? <laughs> how you feeling tonight? And then just kind of breathe. <sighs> <laughs> and that's all you all get from me. So y'all gonna have to wait. Oh my goodness, you man, you heard it. Kishi putting out an album in 2024. It's gonna eat your your heart out, Barry White. I mean, I know you're you know you're gone, but damn, Kishi Fox. Okay. Oh my goodness, man. It, it got hot in the it, it got hot in the studio. All it, yeah, I was about to take off my jacket. Yeah. I, I don't know why. I was about to take it off. But you start singing that low decibel like that. You're done. You're Voice decibel just see, dropped. See, I'm all, I'm all over. Man. You know what I mean? We we can hype it up. Yeah. You know? Uh-huh. You know we can go down low. You know, just right. slow and low. Man, so you got the so, album coming out. That's yeah. up, man. Uh, wrestling fans, fans, none of the music fans all over mm-hmm. across the world. I'm sure that's going to be something everyone's going to be looking forward to. Um, and you've... Uh, You've you've been involved with your own music for a while, right? Like uh, when you you're, you had a theme, uh, "I'm a bad man." Yeah, that was when you went heel. When you yeah. turned heel for the first time, mm. did you have something to do with that song? Like, was that you on the track, or was that no, no, that wasn't me. Okay, okay, so that was but, uh, just yeah, completely I, different. I got it from Jim Johnson, and you know, I liked the tune, I liked the way it sounded. It just fit the character. Okay, the dark, cool type of character. That's when I busted out with those. Rikishi Fatu leather outfits, you know, with the black glove, the big thick cold cold uh, right. gold chain. Right. And uh, yeah, it just fit. We were good. That was one of my favorite favorite intro music. You know. So you you had an ear for it. So you were producing back then. You were helping being part of the process in the studio, picking out, listening. Does this I, does I, this go with my my character? Do I feel yeah. this? Because it's important to feel your your music, right? As a, as a pro wrestler, especially on that level, well, it's very important. If you don't, you know, if you don't, you, well, you know. If you don't feel the music that you're coming out to, you know what I mean. It's very hard to relate, right? I mean, for the for the two cool, you look fly today. And when I first heard that jam, it made my feet move. It just made me want to dance, and so that's how that kind of came about. To where it's like, damn man, we should do something different at the end. You know, they, you know, all the time they, they look at all, you know, my uncles and you know, all other family members is like these savages. You know, like. You know, that's all we do is just come. Ah, ah. Mm-hmm. And so I wanted to do some, okay, I still keep that to where I whoop your ass in the ring when we need to take care of business. But then after that, I just wanted to do something different. It's always at the end of every match, you know, the referee raises the guy's hand, yada, yada, yada. Okay, they're out. But, you know, I, I thought about, man, what if they, you know, boom, we win the match and then all of a sudden turn this arena into a discotheque. Mm-hmm. And that's what I came down. Boom! Drop the head, drop the arms. You know the lights go, start going like we in the you know in the club, mm-hmm. and the rest was history, man. I was just in my mind, Joey. The first time when I danced with Too Cool in the ring, and oh, no, I'm sorry, when I danced by myself for the first time, the, this this kid went back to Pier Thirty Nine, and you know while you're dancing, you're not knowing if. The people jump into the music, but I'm not knowing if they're going to buy this. And so my mind went back to Pier 39 in 1982. Wow. And I'm sitting in there, and I'm doing this, and I just kind of see everything fast forward. You open your eyes, and you're in front of, like, you know, 50,000 people jam-packed going crazy. And so that day there, I knew that, you know, with us and Too Cool, myself and Too Cool, it was a good fit. Because, you know, they, they say white boys can't jump. Mm-hmm. Well, you got two white boys that are not really hip-hop. Mm-mm, not at all. Right? You can barely dance. No, they're part of the rhythmless but, nation. <laughs> but that's why it worked. Yes. Because when we were talking in the back, you know, Scotty came with the, you know, he did the the worm. Mm-hmm. And then Grand Master came. I said, what, what can you do? So he <laughs> came up with the, he called it the Michael Jackson. Boom, boom. You use it when you start, you know? Come on out. And so it was, I was laughing while I'm watching this, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I was like, man, this is going to work. I said, why is it going to work? Because you're not supposed to learn, uh, know how to do it right. 
You know, and I think that's what's what's gonna you know have people gravitate to. Yep. So you got the big Samoan blonde hair. Yep. In the thong. Mm-hmm. And you got the two hip hop brothers by me, and, and the rest was just we we at one time were the top selling merchandise in front of Stone Cold and I believe The Rock. I I didn't believe that. But when you see those damn residual checks come, mm -hmm. you knew that we was on to something good. So wow. that's how we came out with the glasses. Yeah. Came back uh, out with, you know, I said, you guys wear the gold chains, uh, you know, those dog tags. Uh, so we were trying to figure out anything to put on the act because we knew the more we had merchandise out mm -hmm. there, the more. So the more you selling merchandise, mm -hmm. is the insider. The more you selling merchandise, the more you going to be the man to be on top. Yes, absolutely. Makes sense, right? A absolutely. Because why, why would I want to bury the guy that's selling more merchandise for me and not put him on TV and to yeah. be able to, you know. Because you might want to work with that uh, individual 100%. down the line. So you want to, yeah, absolutely. So it's business. Of course. And not just being in the ring and stuff. It's business, too. Come on know? now. Uh, man, Kishi, uh, before we uh, take off of the rest yeah. of the night, is there any last words uh, you want to say? Well, all I got to say is this. Smarten up. Ooh. You want to bring awareness to your business? All you got to do is hit the link below. And then guess what? Rikishi Fight 2 Off the Top Podcast will be promoting you. It's time to smarten up. It's time to say things that people are scared to say. It's time to bring you on into my home so you know what time it is. In the locker room, in the hip-hop world, in the wrestling world. You might even come into my kitchen.